Hello, I'm Salvna. Welcome to Subnautica, the horror game disguised as a survival adventure game underwater. And I'm going to be doing any percent for you today. So first of all, we're going to start the timer when I gain control of the character, which is after I skip the cutscene. You can skip the cutscene. It says it in the bottom left. Most people miss it, but you can skip it, and that's what we're doing to start. I am going to be looking for a good spawn. I have one save file, if this spawn isn't good, but it just gives me a chance to talk about what I'm looking for. Okay, and... Is that, that started? No? Yes. Okay, good. So I'm looking for a spawn that's furthest away from the Aurora as I possibly can. And this is actually perfect. Wow, fantastic. Hey! <laughs> Lovely. RNG. The reason I'm wanting this is because we're wanting to be close to as many early game resources as I possibly can. It's not that I hate the Aurora spe specifically, it's just that's where I'm going to get everything. So, first two limestone are always one copper, one titanium. With that, I can make myself a scanner. We're going to wait till that's done and we're going to activate a glitch called Ghost Storage. I open the locker, then I immediately leave. Next time I open my PDA, no matter where I am, I can access that locker. I'm going to go over to a coral tube now and grab myself some r early game resources. You'll notice I'm going to be breaking rocks a little bit faster than normal. That's because you bind the scroll wheel to one of your action keys, and each scroll counts as multiple inputs of that action. Pretty fantastic for this game, because normally click four times to make these rocks when I add the item set, and I can just scroll once. You do it running at least 30 FPS, and you want to scroll slowly, not quickly, because scrolling quickly actually makes it worse. Also trying to do some sort of helix-like motion to grab the resources in this cave can be a little bit awkward, though, depending on the resource distribution. Also, you drown at minus eight and not zero, so I've got a ton of time in here. And this is a time where I can tell you I'm playing on an old patch. I will tell you when stuff doesn't work on the new patch. I hate to say it is pretty much everything. Unknown Worlds have done a very good job recently. This year, in fact, they've done a release that basically killed any percent on current patch. <laughs> so we're going to be going and getting a few resources. I want to make a sea glide here. So after these first two fruit, I will be doing the ghost storage. There you go. You can use scroll wheel in the inventory on this patch. You can't do that on the new patch, it's very sad. I believe it's due to a soft lock you can get into, so that's fair enough. We're going to head over here to our first wreck, and hopefully I'm going to be able to find two sea glides to start the run. If not, there's tons of backups. Hopefully I don't have to go to every single one. No, we got two sea glides. Fantastic. Lovely. I believe on the first time I ran this at an event, I had to go to five wrecks, which was great. And we're just going to drown here after I find, hopefully, a metal salvage somewhere close. So when you die, you get to keep one... We got anything? Anything? Anything at all? I'll scan this, sure. When you die, you get to keep one random item you picked up after you left your base. That's going to be a metal cell, well, a titanium here. And I get to keep everything else in my base, because it's already in my base. It makes sense. Okay. Lovely, lovely. Once again, scroll wheel. I love it. I've been doing a lot of glitchless on the recent patch, and uh, I definitely miss it. Holding the sprint key keeps the menu open here. Very useful for crafting all these items, as I make myself a knife and a two tank and a sea glide. That's once again holding the spring key to keep the menu open. Can still do this on the current patch. Hooray! And we have the perfect amount of titanium. Fantastic. Yeah, that's why I really like getting the metal salvage there, but that's okay. We're going to dump these and go around and get some more resources. Tons of resource collection during this game. So, I'm going to want three table coral, 70 to 21 quartz, two silver, two gold, and as much limestone as I can carry. The sandstone is going to spawn in the exact same spot every single time in the safe shallows, so it's a very good thing to memorize as I'm going around here. I should really be counting the quartz, but I've been doing a, for these marathon runs, I've been doing a dupe strat at the end to get the extra glass. So it's not that bad if I get a little less than 17 as I go around here. Lovely. We might have a brief time for a donation if you've got one. We do indeed. Um, just during the intermission, we had a $10 donation from Quest CZ um, with no comment, uh, but thank you very much. Lovely, lovely. Thank you so much. Okay. So ideally, I'm getting the one gold and two silver during this round. I believe I got the gold there. That's fine. We're going to be getting another two sandstone in a second. Again, all of these are set spawns for these sandstone in the safe shallow, so I don't really need to worry too much. The sandstone goes around in cycles of eight, three silver, three lead, and two gold. That is until you break a rock that could break to could result in any of those. So a shale can drop gold. So as soon as I break a shale, that loop is broken. You can't do there is a shale cycle if you were to not break any sandstone through the whole game and just break shale. So I think it's a cycle of 255, something like that. 
My resource count is very low. I'm going to have to make a bit more metal to actually make this base. That's fine, though. Not the end of the world. Lovely. So, the reason I have a save file, one of, before in the events I've done this, I've used a random spawn. The reason I've got a save file for this and the reason I was looking for a good spawn, even though obviously it is faster, we're wanting to get near one of these very specific spots that have mushrooms close to the ground that I can build a base right on top of. This is going to be very useful for activating a little glitch. Going to do that in a second, not right now. I've got a glass on me. I want to make a piece of base in front of my hatch that skips exit animations, not intro animations. I'm going to make two solar panels here. It's very important I remember which is the last one I made. That's going to be the front one. I'll tell you why in a, a bit later. And in we go. So we're going to set up a nice little house here. Two fabricators and two lovely lockers. So, I don't have enough quartz for the second locker. That's not fine. That's not bad, though. As long as I've got one, it's all good. Lovely. Dump this. Resources. Fine. Okay. So, mushrooms can damage your base. If you damage it enough, it starts flooding. If you're in a flooded base when it floods, or if you're in a flooded base, you're in deconstruct or reconstruct a hatch or a window, the game's going to think you're both swimming and walking at the same time, so it puts those two speeds together. Pretty fantastic. Make sure you're very fast. Going to use a flare glitch now. Use a flare, try and open a locker. You cannot. Next time I open a P my PDA, no matter where I am, I can access that locker. A lot like the ghost storage, but you can use it on the floor lockers there. So that was 5, 8, oh no, 9, 10. I think one more, actually. That's fine. One, two, three, four. So this is so I can do some more resource collection and then be able to dump it back on my base. So these are the two to make up the full eight that I want to do. I want to be counting sandstone in cycles of eight. As I said, they go, I do go in cycles of eight, so it's a lot easier to know how many resources you have if you're doing this. We're going to grab some metal for the doggos, and hopefully it's good. I didn't really get a chance to look on the way through. We're full there. That's fine. We'll use the flare storage just to dump this stuff in there. I don't need it right now. We're going to be doing some a little bit of dog inspection. Give me this. Thank you. So, do we have anybody? we got one. That's okay. Sure. So, what I'm wanting here is teeth. Now, if this were current patch, it wouldn't be too bad. I'm just going to have to do another little look. Okay, they're fine for now. So, dogs. Every time they pick a piece of metal, there's a 25% chance they drop a tooth. However, on this patch, there is a bugged piece of metal. One in four pieces of metal will never drop a tooth. That was fixed on the most recent patch, so if you're running glitchless, you're very happy, which I have been doing, as I said. So, while, while I'm waiting for them to do drop teeth, I'm just going to go around here. Ooh, a tooth. <laughs> Lovely. Okay, so we're at three sandstone, four sandstone. Very important, I'm keeping a count here. Four sandstone, five sandstone. As I go around, we got six. Some more quartz. Lovely. Seven. Eight. So dogs don't actually exist unless you're close to them. They're not, re they're not rendered, so they can't do anything. They cannot pick up metals. That's why I have to be close to the dogs to pick up metal. I can't just come back here at the end of the game and be like, oh, there's, there's 700 teeth on the floor, because they do not exist. So we're going to go up, and we're just going to watch them. And this is where we're going to really hope that there's some donations in, because I'm just not going to do a lot. <laughs> Off you go. <laughs> Fabulous. Well, we have got two. We've got a generous $50 donation from Razor1 saying, Take my luck, Selvner. Hope that Casper blesses the run, that Kevin has all your nickel and no bugs from Boris. Oh, and tell the same joke again. <laughs> Less than three. Um, before we get that joke in, uh, we also had a $25 donation from 2D SVD um, saying, Fish, me like fish. <laughs> <laughs> also, I'm in love with Subnautica, um, with that $25 going towards the nothing 100% Moonwalk soft lock demo. Yep, um, the joke, I mean, hey, I've got my own joke. Uh, we're going to be speedrunning nothing later on, and um, you have a chance to show uh, for uh, Ruffle Bricks to show off the soft lock demo. Um, and we are currently $30 through the $500 for that, but coming up sooner, we have the Fury speedrun mode with blindfolded bosses. Um, which is in a couple rounds time. Um, it's got a $500 goal with 180 towards it so far. So, hey, it's in your hands, folks. Okay, and we've we actually got the teeth pretty quickly there, which is great. We have had runs where it's taken about five to ten minutes. I do have enough time for really, really bad luck. It's just if it all comes together at the same time, we might we might overrun. But thankfully, we got some pretty good dogs there. And thank you very much for the donations. Uh, the joke I. My friends told me to stop pretending to be a flamingo. I just had to put my foot down. There you go, Razor One. Okay, we're going to do a little bit of crafting here. 
Oh. Come on. Mouse sensitivity. Do me well. Thank you very much. Gonna try and upgrade my O2 tank here if I've got enough quartz. Uh, we we just about do. Okay, that's fine. We can do some more crafting later. Lovely. Dump this stuff in here. I want to dump the lead in a different locker. Get out of here and you as well. And we'll go this stuff and this stuff. Lovely. So I believe my count was about eight. And once again, flare storage. And we're out of here. Actually, I can do this now. Hooray. There you go. So that's the one that skips eggs animations. We're going to go through and grab ourselves some more resources. Copper count. Uh, I haven't made any. I'm going to say four. Let's go with that. Why not? So these top eight don't count. As I said, I'm counting in cycles of eight. So for this, this is in a cycle of eight, so I'm just going to ignore it. We got... Because these do spawn here every single time. So this is two. We're at two eight. And down. Two nine. Lovely. More quartz is appreciated. Three nine, four nine. Just can I just get that? Thank you very much, guys. Four ten. Four eleven, so four twelve, four thirteen. I don't really mind the light on, on this sea glide. But I do not like the map, it just gets in my way. Another thing that was done on the most recent patch, Unknown Worlds put in a different button to to switch on the map, which is fantastic. We're at 512, lovely. 513, 514. Uh, sure, some more quartz. 515, 516, and up. Uh, we should still have a bit of space here. So I'm going looking to get nine metal salvage for this whole first section. That's going to help me make the ingots I need to carry on. This whole... Okay, we are full. That's fine. This whole start of the run is just gathering various materials. I actually want two of that metal back. Thank you very much. And... 17... 18... 19... 20... There's always two in this cave. 21, 22. Sure, of course. 23, 24. Just one gold now. We've got no MVB pieces. I've been keeping an eye out for MVB pieces. So I'm going to go up for air because we're going to go down into a lower cave. So Super Sea Glide does go away if you surface. This isn't surfacing. I'm definitely still in the water. You will know when you surface. You will sort of jump out. And... The Super Sea Glide, again, cannot do that on the current patch. So that's... I think I'm looking for one more gold now to complete my set. There you go. Lovely. That's all done on this. So I'm going to do a little magic trick. Build a base inside this wreck and it's going to disappear. Pop. There you go. And we're going to look for MVBs inside. Another thing fixed on the latest patch. They really went and slaughtered everything. But they have been very generous to us. They've given us a beta branch on Steam. If you do want to run this... Patch it is a speedrunner's beta. Thank you very much, Devs, for giving us this. Really helps out the community. And back we go. Hello, doggos. You're very generous today. Thank you so much. Grab a bit of air on the way. And uh, we'll do some crafting now. So we're looking to get the ingots made and all the electronics. Okay, mouse, come on. That's fine. Wiring kit's good. Uh, dump the lead. I don't care about you. We're going to get copper. We're going to get gold. We're going to get all this silver in here. We're going to go some copper wire. I don't think I made any copper. Uh, I might have made one copper wire. Let's make two copper wire. I've got one copper wire there. Yeah, we've got the mushrooms to make myself some batteries. We've got so that's three copper wire. This is four copper wire. And the other one of these. I'm going to want the... Uh, sure, that's fine. Yeah, lovely. Okay. Okay, so I'm missing one copper. That's that's all right. That's all right. That's not too bad. So we're gonna go computer chips, computer chips. Three, four of these. Three and four. Yeah, that's fine. I haven't got all these yet. Lovely. This more advanced wiring kits. I want to leave four silver in there. There's the four. Lovely. And I need to make another ingot. I think I need two more ingots if I'm correct in my counting. We've got the. Got one ingot in my inventory. I can. Oh, I'm four off. That's actually perfect. That's beautiful. 
Lovely. Okay, and that's fine. Dump this nonsense. We'll grab a bit more copper before we... Oh, we got this. That's great. So we're going to be making the MVB here, this and these two, and the batteries in my inventory already. So we'll go power cell and titanium ingot. Come now. Come now. Lovely. And little vehicle bay. And that'll do for now. Ooh, did I get that before or after I left my base? So if you remember I said you get to keep all the items. You get to keep one random item when you die. So that's any random item that you got after you left your base. And because I was in the hatch animation, that might have counted. I want to pick up a metal salvage here. So I'm going to head over to the Aurora now, get what is essentially the final blueprint of the game. I say the final blueprint of the game because it's the blueprint that actually finished the game rather than the last blueprint I'm actually going to get. And we're going to go through a maintenance hatch, which is definitely intended. Don't worry about it. It does still actually exist on current patch. You can do this. And straight through. We used to spend a lot of time doing some fancy glitches where we used to fly up on a rabbit ray and get through the top, because there's a hole up there, uh, and then someone just found this hole at the bottom. So, <laughs> so this is a lot easier. You cannot do this on current patch. We're going to find a very specific spot on a corridor right outside the captain's quarters. It's going to be right here. And look right up at this and then just jump through the floor hopefully there shouldn't be a box in the way lovely two six no you don't two six seven nine is always the code every single time open the door grab the final broom of the game and then we're just going to die in this fire and the electrical is above it smash the keyboard not too much though <laughs> lovely lovely okay so what am i going to want here i'm going to want two i'm going to want i'll do that later that's fine two of these I want this, this, these two, this. I don't need two of those. Uh, yeah, it's just five. Yeah, that's fine. I can scan something on the way. Lovely, lovely jubbly. So what we're going to do, we're going to dump the MVB in there. We're going to grab a flare. We're going to use the flare storage. Just confirm I've done this. Very annoying if I haven't. Make that. And this is where I'm going to deconstruct this. So the second solar panel that you make is the one that's going to drain last. If you partially can deconstruct a solar panel, it's going to retain any energy it has in it. So that solar panel is going to keep all the energy it currently has, and because it's the one that drains last, it's the one I use last, and that will have the most energy in it. So when I come back, the first one will still be generating energy, and that one will have the retained stuff. So that's going to be enough for me to finish this game. We're going to scan something I already know how to make. That gets me to five. Lovely. Well, seven now. And head over. We're heading over to the mountain island now. Grab some resources I can't get in base. Grab some fragments I can't get in base. And do the storyline of Subnautica. Yes, you hear me right. There's a storyline. We're going to go do that now. I'm going to want to fish. Lovely. So we used to go along that beach. Try and find us some fragments to scan there. Uh, but we just cut the corner now. Uh, speed over consistency. Basically. And down. We're going to do my favorite glitch of the run. Passing the fish the skip. Oxygen there you go. Did I do it? I didn't even do it. Beautiful. So you can overlay animations there, release a fish, then skip, switch over to your sea glide. And it saves two whole seconds. Wow. In a run filled with RNG, it definitely matters. I, I swear. So I'm looking for 14 lithium here. 14 lithium and three golds. We've got three, we've got four. We've got another chance to do the fish skip. Don't worry. Hopefully you'll be able to see it. Four, five. Five and one. Six and one. Seven and one. And that'll do for now. Head on over here. We're going to make ourselves a little base. Base. A friend. Hatch. And a solar panel. Lovely jobly. And I'm going to leave that. Don't want it anymore. Eight and one. We're going to go down. We're going to grab ourselves. Ooh. I don't have the rebreather yet. Okay. Nine and one. We're going to have to make a little... Uh, that should be fine. Okay. I think I can deal with this. That's fine. That's fine. This is all fine. <laughs> Lovely. Okay, so I forgot to make a rereader there. That's fine. We can keep all the resources I grabbed. We've already done most of the setup. I still need one engine and two moon pool. 
and because of the flare storage, we're pretty much all set there. So we're at 5.9, and I'm going to make the rebreather now. And yeah, th this is definitely how I intended it, don't worry about it. We can go around the other way of the mountain, and it'll, it'll look real cool. So I still want these two, I still want this, I still want these two uh, to make that, and that is it. Lovely. And once again, still flare storage. And out. Nine and one. Now I've got the rebreather. A lot easier on air. And we will go down the other way around the mountain. And we've got time for one more donation while I'm backtracking. Awesome. Well, we've had a couple come in, but we can uh, we can land one right now. Um, we had fifteen dollars from Squagonal, Squagonal, um, saying, "If you're a subnautica fish, what would you be?" Oh, it's always Reginald. Reginald's the answer to all of these questions. Ooh. Best what a, fish. What an astute name. <laughs> exactly. Let exactly. me know when we've got time for more. Uh, how am I going to get all of my resources? That's the. Am I just going to run straight up to Mabel and say hi? I think I might be. Yeah. Where even is she? Uh, there's normally a Mabel here. I don't know where she's gone. Okay, that's fine. She she wasn't needed anyway. She's just part of the sightseeing tour as we go back. Uh, nine and one, we got nine and two, lovely. Ten and two, we're going to go to this wreck. It's going to spawn in and hopefully not trap me, thank you. I want one more engine. There should be two moon balls here. So now we're, we can just pre pretend that whole section didn't happen. And two moon pools. Lovely. Look at all those engines. Delicious. And we got nine and two, nine and three, nine and ten and three, eleven and three, twelve and three, thirteen and three, and fourteen and three. That'll do. And up there. So while we're doing this, we're going to use the flare storage, definitely for the, the first time during this section, I swear. And grab this, lovely. So I'm going to want this, I'm going to want this back. I don't want any of these. I definitely don't want two of those or two of those. I'm not going to want these diamonds. I may as well put them in there. And this should be fine. Lovely. And down we go. I'm going to need one more metal, but I, I think I'm fine with that. So just double check what plants I have right now. Mushroom, okay. So I'm going to grab this. I'm going to do a little MVB clip here. You find a very specific spot. Push down and deploy. And on this patch, pretty much anywhere than overhang, I can clip out of bounds with this. Which is lovely, and we're going to go straight down. You'll notice I'm not facing down, I'm still going the max speed though. Super Sea Glide doesn't care which way you face, rather than normal Sea Glide. This saves us about 20 seconds, depending on how well you execute that, because the entrance is, is, is like right over there. We're cutting a corner. Not the most exciting, but still pretty decent. We're going to go straight into the Lost River, one of my favorite biomes of the game. It's just so pretty. Grab ourselves a plant, and then take some damage. Delicious, delicious damage. We hopefully find something of relevance here. We got one. That's okay. That's all right. I I'd like a bit more damage, actually. Looking for my titanium. Lovely. So out of Casper, the friendliest goes to the Varthen. If Casper says I back Casper, this is the run. Casper? Casper's silent today. Nah, there you go. We got a little shout. And now I'm looking for some nickel. Nickel's a tiny little thing last to buy iron seek, and I need three of it. If you play this game for long enough, everything in this area starts looking like nickel. The fish, the floor, the bubbles, the fish give off. Everything looks like nickel. And of course, nickel is a tiny little potato, so it's very hard to spot. We're trying to get three. There's one. One nickel. It's not really a problem with spotting the nickel. If the nickel's there, it's quite easy to see. The problem is imagining everything else in the entire area is nickel. Ah, there we go. Lovely. So, we're going to go past Kevin. Kevin is a big, loud boy. Likes eating Glitchers Runners. Thankfully not playing Glitchers today, so we should be fine. Uh, yeah, it's fine. Uh, Kevin can just go through any wall he likes. He has no boundaries. So, if he decides we're, we're going to die today, that's, that's on him. Two, three... Uh, second, I still need a fourth. There was a fourth one there, but this is fine. We're going to make a moon pool right here. 
and hopefully not get slashed by Boris. We're going to pop in. This is a portable spawn point. And we're going to go inside. What's my health like? It's good enough for a survival jump. In we go. Okay, we still have that. Good. Lovely. Taking a lot of damage here. Grab the cube. These animations tend to overlap. Don't worry about it too much, even if the sea glide flies away. Not today. That's fine. Occasionally, your sea glide decides it had to, it's had enough and flies off the screen. And we're done. Lovely. We're going to respawn back on my portable spawn point outside. We're going to activate Super Sea Glide again. It, you lose it when you leave the water, but a flooded moon pool still counts. So we go up to the surface and down again, and that's Super Sea Glide again. I don't need this anymore because I am going in other ways. Thank you for the resources. I don't need the lead. And we're going to find one more Kainai. I could go and get that one at the entrance, but hopefully the game's going to be slightly kinder to me. Not really. This is good enough, though. We're at four, and the Kainai count, the sulfur count is two. Sure, four and two. I need two more sulfur. That's fine. We're going to find a very specific spot over here. Try not to get got by little doggos. And this particular bit of texture. Not quite. That's fine. Being a little picky, are you? There we go. Lovely. If, if, come on, come on now. There you go. Had to do a little, a few little backflips, but that's fine. And we're going to leave that one there. Wild mobile vehicle bays exist in this game. I'm going to use that to my advantage to grab a wild one later and just abandon that one. Off I go. We've got two sulfur to find. We're going to get the out of bounds sulfur. I really don't want to go in bounds. There is a backup, but it is a lot slower. So we're hoping we don't have to do that. And there's Clippy. Clippy loves going out of bounds. She absolutely adores just going on holiday where you can't find her, which is great. Because once again, she's a very big problem for Glitchless. And this one, get out of my face, big mama. I'm trying to do things. And in, straight into the PCF. So normally you'd have to do some stuff with making some tablets to get through that section, but we can just skip right through with the MVB. Lovely. I'm looking for two things in here. I'm looking for a cube and a plant. Delicious, delicious sea crayon. We're going to do a little battery swap. Nice and fast. Unfortunately, on the uh, about the battery swaps, uh, so Big Mama's a little bit confused right now. She's waiting for someone to come in the correct way. No one's ever going to do that. So that's her power pose for the rest of time. Going to activate this pedestal, and we're going to clip through this. So with Super Sea Glide, I can slightly clip through everything. Not fully, just slightly, so I can see the pedestal, activate it, and leave. My young need to hatch, to play outside. They actually nerfed battery swapping on the second game. Everything's a little bit lagged, so you can't switch as fast, which is a real shame. We're going to find ourselves a lovely little base that someone made for us. Oh, how very kind. Grab the friend, in I go. So there's a cutscene going on. If your loading time is slower, you actually don't have to wait as long, but here we are. There you go. The cure. We're going to deconstruct this fully. And deconstruct the hatch fully as well. On the most recent patch, you don't have to. There's actually a soft lock associated with that. You can spawn in the base with a partially constructed hatch. And we're going to do some inventory management in the portal. Take off these. Dump this. Another thing you cannot do on the current patch. <laughs> I will be saying that a lot. With the passage you opened, my young can leave this place going to hatch the babies and immediately leave because there is an animation you can watch but actually you're already outside we're going to go say hi and again inventory management I want to put these back on so that's manipulating my O2 level so I've got an O2 level and my O2 tank has an O2 level so now my O2 level is low but my O2 tanks is high I'm going to push this cure just into this wall I'm going to do it carefully because I don't want to don't want to mess this up. There's again there's another backup for it but it's not too bad. So the the cutscene for this cure wants you to be horizontal. So if you interact with it vertical it's going to push you down and you can go through the wall. You don't have any collision during the section. You are the bubble. So you can even do fancy stuff where you push the cure sort of get on the other side and it pushes you through the wall as well. We can get pushed out by the little little kiddies here. They can push me away but thankfully they're all quite far. You can do some funny things with floaters in this actually. If you attach a floater to one you will fly all the way up to the surface. And in we go. To the gun, which we're going to need to turn off before we can leave. There's some storyline in the game. I'm not going to tell you too much about it, but 
There's something stopping us from leaving, and that is this building. We're just on a whirlwind tour, so I doubt you've got much of the uh, the experience. <laughs> we're going to do something a little weird where we're going to have our PDA open. This isn't entirely necessary. It is something you can do, and you can actually interact with it if you're very like specific. You can take stuff off. But with the strat we're going for, we don't need to. We're going to take it off immediately after we get out of this cutscene. But it looks very funny to watch. Take that off. And I'm going to grab a couple items before I die. So I did say you get to keep one random item that you picked up after you left your base. But you also get to keep storyline items in quotation marks. These are tablets and cubes. I'm going to get to keep both of those. I'm going to open my PDA because you can open it while you're dead. And we're going to do this when I spawn. Can't equip it, but I can do this. There you go. Lovely. Back in our life pod and back to the base. Gonna need some more copper at some point. I could do that for this next section, depending on which I flare storage. That should be fine. Uh, I don't need air. I need two metal, actually. I do need two metal. Don't pull this. Uh, I just need the. I need three copper. That's fine. That's fine. Two metal. And flare storage again. We did leave the water, so I will have to reactivate Super Sea Glide. And we're out. Over to the Sparse Reef once again. More resources, more fragments, no storyline as I go this way. It's a little bit of a swim, so we do have time for a couple donations. Brilliant. Well, we've seen people coming out in droves in support. We've had a $10 donation from Robot Tip, Tablet Lady, saying, remember, the materials you gather are property of Alzheimer's Fondo. <laughs> You will be liable to donate the full market price. Your current bill stands at 3 million credits. <laughs> at $20 from Rubix37 saying, Hi, Selvner. I hope the game blesses you today. Thanks for showing Subnautica off. Love from Rubix. Both of those donations, putting their money towards the blindfolded boss incentive. And then we have two other donations. $50 from Fant saying, Salve, love your runs. Also, amazing hat. Good fish. <laughs> Good luck today, ESA runners. And then a final $10 donation from Grailix saying, <clears throat> Team Salve Go. Thank you so much, everybody, for the kind donations. Thank you so much. So we did go past the Garden of the Cave, that little, uh, well, the quite big fish at the top of the surface. He tells me where to go down. I'm looking for two rubies, two gel sacks. I might have already got a gel sack, but I'll, I'll just get two now just to be safe. And up we go. We're using the nighttime strats, know where we are, so we go across this wreck and just straight forward. That gets me to the next location. I've got a fish. I'm looking for a salt as well. Lovely. Another item needs that. And down. So around Subnautica, there's a couple of these caches that keep cubes inside. I need three more cubes because I got one just before I died in the gun. And normally there wouldn't be water in that gun, by the way. It's just because we never went through the front door. Left and right, then left again, gets me to the next location. And once again, we're going to do a little magic trick here. And we're going to hope for the RNG. This, this part kills quite a few runs. But it should be fine. So we're looking for three bridge and three hull. We got another bridge over there. This is one and one. There's another bridge. Lovely. And... Hull? Okay, okay. If I've got enough through this section, this is... Yeah, this is probably good. Probably good enough. Lovely. Uh, so that's the bridge, and this should be the hull. Hey, the full Cyclops. So, once again, the fish skip. Hooray! So we got the animation going while I'm using the sea glide. does save a couple seconds. We're going to grab three of these. We're going to use flare storage to dump anything new in my storage. Not the cubes, though. I don't need to do that with that. And we're going to die. To take us back to the light pod again. Well, to my base, even. Lovely, lovely, lovely. So I do want to get the copper at some point. I can go get that later. Uh, no, I should do that now. So I need three more copper and some more of these, just because of how the copper worked out. That's fine, though. The game does tend to cut the sound quite a lot when you're dying like this, which is a real shame, because it's got some bangers in there. It's uh, it's trying to predict when you die and cut the sound at an appropriate time. Which makes sense, but can be a little bit strange. Looking for one... I should really just go to the other coral tube if I'm looking to get this many copper, because I've just got the one. That's fine. 
little bit of a backup. Over here. We've got time for one more donation while I'm doing this, if you've got one going. Well, we don't have any doing. Oh, actually, one's just come in. Perfect timing. We have $25 from Secret Doc saying, Brilliant swimming, excellent run. Thank you so much. I get one more copper, please. Game. There we go. So, the, like I said with the sandstone, the limestone actually goes in cycles as well. It's uh, one copper, one titanium, and then it'll cycle over and over again. So, you, get, you can get two copper in a row, but you can't get three. Lovely, and so that can make me my two copper wire and my... Computer chip, lovely. Because I want all the electronics here, all of these. Give me those electronics, not you, Ruby. I want these two, I want these two, I want this. I want four of those, I want a glass. I'm going to have to dupe the glass, that's fine though. Glass, and I don't want this. So that's going to be... Yep. Yeah, I've got three of those, that's where that's where that went. So I'm going to do something a little special, we're going to go base. Another thing you cannot do on the current patch, base, base, up for air, so I don't drown. A window, deconstruct this. There's a floating window now. We're going to do a Katerni piece, and then we're going to finish the window. So the game's a little bit confused. This window can't go on there, so now I've got two bases. I'm going to make a moon pool. Oh, no, a little bit closer, please. I'm going to make a moon pool here. And this this is two bases, so this is two moon pools. Lovely. I'm going to deconstruct the outer moon pool. There's a moon pool inside. And that's going to be two. Deconstruct, reconstruct. Now there's two moon pools. Deconstruct the outer moon pool. There's a moon pool inside. Four. Oh, deconstruct, reconstruct, deconstruct the animal pool, there's a moon pool inside, six. I'm going to keep going. Need, need nine of these, so I'm going to eight. And then the ninth. Lovely. We're going to go one, two, three. Oh, no, not the glass. Give me that back. Give me the glass back. Thank you. And we're going to dupe that in a second, so I'm just going to set that up there. And a lovely, majestic wild mobile vehicle bay has just appeared right next to our base. How kind, how generous, how glorious even. And there's a little friend there, that's fine. So, of course, everyone knows, wild mobile vehicle bays were hunted to extinction about five years ago. This is, in fact, the same mobile vehicle bay I left down in the lava zone. Subnautica, like a lot of the open world games, render stuff that's close to you, but not stuff that's far away. There are a couple exceptions to this, water and MVBs being two of them. So when I leave the area, the MVB exists, and the water exists, but the land around it doesn't. So it'll just float all the way up to the surface, and it just so happens that that area in the lava zone is right below here. And we're getting our four glass lovely. Oh, is there one in there? No, okay. That's fine. So we're going to get prepped for the next section. I want... Where are my teeth? There they are. Lovely. And all of these. Uh, steel. So I need four of these and the teeth as well. Reactivate Super Sea Glide again. I did leave the water. And you can get away with three when you're doing these more. Uh, where's the rest of this stuff? There it is. These slower crafts. There we go. But the rest of the time you don't. So we only have the two there. Grab this. We're going to do a lovely dolphin dive. Super Sea Glide enabling us there. We're going to go over to this corner and build ourselves a Cyclops. I'm going to push that a little bit back so it doesn't turn. I said so it doesn't turn. Thank you very much, game. Further back, sure. And build the Cyclops just there. That's going to do something special for us when we return. I need to make uh, grab the nickel, get two just uh, aerogels for the next section. These I may as well do this as well. The salt. A little worried about that one. Uh, I'm sure I'll be fine. I'll be fine. Where's my aerogel? I've got that. And where's my nickel? Lovely. Uh, we want to make these as well while I'm doing this. So we're going to go 
just have something building. Reactivate Super Sea Glide again, because I did leave the water. And do this. Next section. So the Cyclops built. It's going to fall down when I approach it, because it doesn't have gravity when you're far away, so it doesn't fall through the floor, like I said with the MVB. That's going to push this down so I can make the next section and still have Super Sea Glide. And back we go to do some more crafting. I'm going to want more of these as we make some power cell and hydrochloric. And I don't need any of those, that's fine. Another power cell, and I need one more gold. There's one gold in here. And this should be everything. Bring the flares with me. Just double check. Mm, yep, that should be fine. And over we go. We're going to do the last set of crafting, doing a little bit of juggling here. I need one thing from the Cyclops. And one thing only. We're going to enter from the outside. You can just access the ladder. And that means it still thinks I'm in the water, so it's a little bit confused. I need one power cell, but thankfully the Cyclops comes with three ones. And we're going to use the PDA so I can actually climb that. Your cannot climb, get out of water very well without opening the PDA. And leave. Lovely. Means we can make the last section of the Cyclops right now. we got our flares at the ready. Yeah, seems about right. Once again, using the PDA here and accidentally opening the steam window. Excellent. Up we go. You don't want to rub your face too much on this lift. Uh, collision can be a little bit odd and you might get flown into space, so we just sort of stand a respectable distance away from the lift and hop the last section. So I brought the flares with me because we can do some, some fancy stuff at the end. Uh, you can actually skip these animations by just throwing flares at them. And those are all switched. So there's three things at the top. You only have to interact with two of them, but we're going to interact with the last one anyway. So you need to turn on the computer systems, the life support, and then there's also a time capsule in this game. Time capsules are actually banned if you're doing a speed run. You can't pick them up. We used to have a category, but it was basically just if you've got a bad run, go pick up a time capsule, get world record in that category. Uh, so yeah, they're just banned outright. But we will do a special one for ESA 2023. Uh, did I even take a picture? Full picture, I can imagine. Delicious. Uh, what do I have in my inventory? There you go. There you go. Future players, enjoy. Enjoy. Greetings. I can't spell, but this is fine. From ESA 2023. Uh, honk from Burb. There you go. An old meme, but it checks out. And time. Oh. Beautiful, beautiful. 42 is not bad. We had, we had a little bit of bad uh, bad luck and some slightly forgetful stuff there, but still under under time, which is nice. Uh, shout outs to the Subnautica community, uh, just constantly working this. We've, we're finding new stuff even now. Uh, really appreciate everyone coming together to watch this run as well. Uh, shout outs to Maskrin, who, was gonna, who couldn't be here, normally sits next to me and just presses the button. Uh, <laughs> and thank you very much for watching. It was great. Well, thank you so much for that run. Um, seems like you pulled in quite the crowd for it, so yeah. Well, well done. Um, folks, we're going to be going to an intermission, and then I believe the next run that we're going to be setting up is Ori and the Blind Forest, a randomizer as well. Ooh, that's going to be good. Do stay with us.